Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, and we're talking trade talk. Big name we're getting into today. We've done Klingberg to Foley, Chikrin, and all the big names that are out there right now as possibilities for trades. We did a couple Washington or Montreal Canadiens, actually. Go check it out. We even did Carey Price. So check out my other videos. Sub yourself up too and get a like and hit the like button for all this fine content. I got another big name that's out there right now. Um, there's talk about either way him being available, but we're going to look at the probability that he is available, and that is Mark Andre Fleury. I got two articles, one in which they talked to Mark Andre Fleury, asked him a question on uh, NHL.com, and on the hockey writers. Uh, we look at the fact that they have named three players that are untouchable. And there is an implication in the article that that means that they're not rebuilding. Now, Kyle Davidson, Chicago's new general manager, has stated that he has a different philosophy than the previous management group. Now, the Bowmans, they sort of were rebuilding but not telling anybody and then, then came out and said that they were rebuilding. So does that mean Davidson is now not rebuilding? Is that he didn't specify what the philosophy change is that he had before? Um, possibly just being much more clear <coughs> and being honest with his players on what's going to happen. Um, so we're going to look at this. We're going to look at what Fleury said. We're going to look at um, what da Kyle Davidson actually said about some players that are not going to be protected. And what that means for Marc-Andre Fleury and the group. Now, one thing that's not mentioned in the, these articles is that he apparently has said to Marc-Andre Fleury that he will not trade him unless he comes and asks to be traded. So I think the philosophy here that is different than it was with the Bowmans is they're more transparent. They're just And they're treating their players with a lot of respect for who they are as human beings, where it looked like in the Bowman's era, they were kind of like, they said, well, we're rebuilding. And then all of a sudden, Alex, uh, Taze came out and went, we're rebuilding. What are we doing? I didn't know we were rebuilding when they traded Crawford. So they weren't transparent with the players what they were doing. It appeared what they were doing is they wanted to rebuild, not tell the veterans, and see their young player get their young players to be able to see what it means to go for a cup from these guys that have won a couple cups. I kind of get it. I don't know which philosophy is best. Maybe you can tell me in the comment section. But let's look at some of the things that Flurry said, some of the things that were talked about, and see the possibility of where Flurry could get traded, which I think is a very good possibility, and we'll find out why here, and four teams he may go to. All right, here's the first one. Flurry was asked by Charlie Remulatis of the uh, NHL.com network. Fantastic writer. Um, love all, everything he does. Pretty honest dude. Um, he comes out, he's, and Mark Andre, the title is It's Not My Thought Yet. Notice that. It's Not My Thought Yet. Um, they asked him, so they asked him. You look at the Colorado, uh, uh, somebody might be interested in strengthening in their goaltending, which uh, we'll see if that's one of the teams that we're looking at here. Naturally, Flurry's name is going to pop up. I mean, Chicago's not very good right now. He's a reigning Vezina Trophy winner. Um, I'm sure he would like to go for a cup if he if he could. So they then on Thursday, Flurry was asked about a trade chatter and whether he's given any consideration to what the future may hold. I don't know. It's not my thought yet, hence the title. All I wanted to have this team make the playoffs. All I want to have is this team make playoffs. Honestly, that's what's in my head right now. And I believe that is honest. I mean, players don't really, they don't, they're not on a team to not make the playoffs and not win. That's what their real focus is. To me, it's not worth, worth looking too far ahead. I just want this team to be in a good position to make the playoffs. But 
here's, here's the thing about what I said. Notice, it's not my thought yet. Um, Chicago's way out of the playoffs right now. They, have, they had a terrible start to the season. They had some terrible things happen in the organization. When the, play, when, when the trade deadline comes up and Chicago's way out of the playoffs, uh, what is Flurry of Flurry, who is on a modified no trade clause, and we're going to take a look at Flurry's contract and all of that. Um, he wasn't exactly thrilled at moving his family when Vegas traded him. Um, while it's not something on the forefront, forefront of everybody's mind, it's a storyline monitor, worth monitoring in the future. And I'm going to look at another article here from the Hockey Writers, Inc. So, but what I want you to get from this is he says, I'm not thinking about that yet. It's not out of the question, obviously. So, Drigger, this is the Hockey Writers, Inc. This is... Uh, um, not Hockey Writers Inc. Sorry, just just playing the Hockey Writers. It's uh, I I I fall on this a lot. I find that their leans and where they get their information from is pretty solid. And as per Darren Drager, there is a deal in place between the Chicago Blackhawks and goaltender Mark Andre Fleury that a trade will not be considered unless he comes to the team and asks for one. So I think this is where the difference of philosophy comes from. Um, when Mark Crawford was traded from, not Mark Crawford, when Crawford was traded, sorry, not Mark, when Crawford was traded from Chicago to New Jersey, where he ended up retiring, he had no idea it was happening. And Taze and everybody had no idea that it was going to happen. They weren't up front. They just traded the player, and that was it. Uh, Flurry is focused on getting the Blackhawks to reach the playoffs. Dreger also expects that there will be extension talks between Flurry and Chicago, and I imagine there will be. It's going to depend on how much they improve, I believe, up until that time. Uh, all of those things like that. I don't think it's out of the question that he's re-signed, but I think it's going to take a lot of talking. Um, de depending on how the Blackhawks do this season, you see, could be open to an idea of sticking around. Right. They're just doing very, very bad. The team has already reportedly deemed Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taze, and Seth Jones as untouchable in trades. Then he says, so it's clear the organization is not rebuilding. Now, here's my thing. I don't see how that's clear. J Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane both have Full no movement clauses, and I've made it clear over and over and over again that they will not. They will not uh, waive those trades, no trade clauses. They're staying in Chicago. They love Chicago. They want to stay there, which makes it difficult to rebuild. Hence the reason why Chicago, before this, with the Bowmans, kind of rebuild it anyways. We're just going to do it with the veterans in the lineup because we know we have to do it. We have to get younger because if we don't, this team is, is the longer we take go, the longer it's going to be for this club to um, be not good, right? It's just the way it works with rebuilds. So they picked up Doc and, you know, they got a couple solid young players and the veterans were frustrated as they um, were losing and then Crawford got traded and then it became a very apparent and Chicago had to come out and say, yeah, we kind of been rebuilding for a while. They were honest about it. So I'm not saying, I don't think that's clear that the organization is not rebuilding. Seth Jones is a young defenseman. They went and got him. They've signed him to a long-term contract. He's still pretty young. So does that mean you're not rebuilding? And even if you're not, does that mean the flurry wants to stick around with the roster as is and the organization as what's happened there? My lean is that Chicago is going to be out of it by the time the deadline comes. Flurry is going to reevaluate and probably go, you know what? I want another cup. I want to maybe I can get a long-term contract somewhere. Now, let's look at Flurry's contract shall we since it was talked about 
By the way, everybody sub up, hit the like button for this great contact. And thanks for listening as we continue on here in the Mark andre Fleury getting traded. Um, Mark andre Fleury. So he is now at a cap hit of $7 million. Now, you'll look up here. At the deadline, it's going to be a lot less than that. He's the remaining daily, he's got a remaining cap hit of 3290000 By the time the deadline comes down, that'll be below $3 million. So when we're looking at trades, we'll keep that in mind that, you know, you got a little more room than you normally would. Now, you got to still stay prorated under the cap, but you can do that a lot better with, yeah, at the deadline. That's why a lot of teams make those moves. Um, he, of course, he's his stats for this year are not looking super pretty. Two point seven six and a point nine one three. However, that was as high as three point one five and all and point nine oh five at one time. He has been, and I've watched a lot of Chicago games this year. When they win, he's usually the reason why. Mark Andre Fleury has still got it, and there's teams that are going to want him big time. For sure. They're going to have to work out some stuff around the cap and all that kind of stuff like that. But there are some teams. So the first team we're going to look at, I thought was likely to start the season, but probably not as likely now. However, I'm still going to look at it because this is a place. He's got a no movement clause, by the way. Flurry has a no movement clause, and it states that... Uh, a 10 team no trade list. So that's almost like a plain no trade list because he can take if he doesn't want to go, he can take teams that doesn't that are for sure not going to want him. He he or going to want him. The thing is is Chicago's already said they're not going unless he comes and says, "Okay, you know what? I want to do it." So we're assuming that he wants to do it. In which case, he's going to be able to control where he goes. So the return may not be as great as possible. So why trade Marc-Andre Fleury in, 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 then? Well, two reasons. First of all, I just mentioned that he is, uh, it's the Pittsburgh Penguins, by the way. First of all, the reason why we trade Marc-Andre Fleury is he's the reason why they're winning and they're not going to be wanting to win so much. Second of all, we said that he is going to be the one that comes to them and says that he'd be interested in doing so. So his agent's going to be looking around for a spot for him to go anyways, in which case you're going to trade him. So, yes, you're not going to have any lever much leverage, but you could have enough teams interested that a return could be not too shabby here. Pittsburgh Penguins. <coughs> okay, first thing you're going to say is Jari's having a great year. He is. He's having a crushingly good year. And that is probably something that may turn this aside. The beginning of the season, Tristan Jari had a bad playoffs. And if he was struggling again, I had a feeling that Pittsburgh might have been a place that was interested for them to go. In fact, I thought maybe that Pittsburgh was in on Flurry to begin with, couldn't get around the contract. Vegas didn't want to give up, take, take any money back. So they went, he went to Chicago with the thought that if they're out of the playoffs, which was very likely, then they would move it to Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh could give, you know, maybe a second pick or something like that. I think that's about all they would have to give up in this situation. Um, now, he's making $3 million a year. Pittsburgh's cap situation is actually not as bad as you may think um, if, we take a, if we take a look at it here. Usually their cap situation is horrible. But if you look at it now, it is current cap space, $4 million, right? So they could do it without taking any money back. And you've got Marc-Andre Fleury and Jari at the same time for a run now and possibly re-signing Marc-Andre Fleury. Now, Chicago could put a clause in here to say if you re-sign Flurry, it's going to cost you an extra uh, pick or something of that nature. 
So I think this could be a place for him. Uh, Pittsburgh fans, would you be interested in just the energy alone of bringing Marc-Andre Fleury back? Do you think Marc-Andre Fleury would be interested in going and maybe being a 1A, 1B type thing like that and going for it for another cup with Pittsburgh? The story would be amazing. And you say, well, how are we going to re-sign Fleury if he does? Well, he'd sign up as more of a backup. Uh, doing this strictly for the fact that he loves Pittsburgh, sort of like what Rask is doing in Boston. And look at all the UFAs that they have next year. There's a lot of guys that they don't have to re-sign. So, and having two players like Jari and Fleury, wow, that would be amazing. I still got to lean that if Fleury is going to decide to go, it's possible that, you know, going back home to Pittsburgh would work for his family and all that kind of stuff like that. I just think he'd probably want to be a number one somewhere, and this is not as likely as maybe the other options that we're about to get into. The next option we're going to look into is the Edmonton Oilers. And, of course, we all know about the goaltending situation with the Edmonton Oilers. Um, it's been a rough year goaltending for them. Of course, uh, you've got Miko Koskinen, who is what sporting a 3.31 and a .898. Stuart Skinner is a little better, but he's a young guy. He's only 23 years old. And is that? do you want either one of them going into the playoffs? I would say no. I know they're out there. They're, they're supposedly out there looking at options. The options are like Hudobin, uh Hopi, you know, Corpusalo. I don't see any of those guys moving the needle enough for this team. Honestly, I think defense is their biggest problem anyways, even more than goaltending, believe it or not. But if you're going to have some defense issues, Marc-Andre Fleury can solve them. If you've been watching what Chicago has been doing, what he's been doing in Chicago this year, and I've watched a lot of Chicago games because I'm a huge Marc-Andre Fleury fan, and uh, he has been saving them all over and over and over again. If the Edmonton Oilers have a chance this year, personally, I believe this is something that they would have to look at. Now, with the Edmonton Oilers, cap room is a huge issue. I don't need to go look at it. They are capped out. So if a deal like this would have to ha would happen, the obvious thing is that Miko Koskinen goes back. They don't need to win all that much right now. Um, Chicago, that is. So getting Miko Koskinen back gets a serviceable veteran that they can finish out the year with, and he comes off the books. They can talk to him as a, they can talk to him in the off season if they want to maintain, keep him, or whatever the case may be. Now, of course, Fleury is going to have to agree to any of this, and there could be some question marks where Fleury wants to go to the frozen tundra of the Edmonton Oilers. Um, he hasn't really, you know. He hasn't really played in Canada before. Uh, it would have to be a case where he thinks that he could be the guy here to bring a cup. And the one thing about going to the Edmonton Oilers, it would be a challenge for him. If he were to win a cup with the Edmonton Oilers with this defense and the struggles that they have, that they've had up until now, um, because they just went on a long losing streak, one against Calgary, if he can win a cup here, it would put him in the lore of probably the greatest goaltenders of all time. Uh, I don't know how much that matters to Marc-Andre Fleury, but if it does, I could say this is a possibility. So the return, of course, you got Miko Koskinen going back. Uh, that almost makes the money there. Maybe you got to throw in another player and a draft pick. Now, it's the Edmonton Oilers. They don't really have all that much leverage unless Marc-Andre Fleury is happy going to a couple places. Um, I don't know if there would be much more they would need to do. Maybe a draft pick and that's it. Um, if Marc-Andre Fleury for some reason just chose Edmonton and that's where he wants to go and nowhere else, the return for Chicago is not going to be the greatest. Um, but again, this is about making a player happy. Um, this team, the Kyle... Peterson is, uh, says he's got a different philosophy than previous management. By the way, if you're liking this, like, subscribe, enjoy all the rest of these, and comment in the comment section if you agree with what I'm saying. 
that that's a different philosophy. The old regime in Chicago um, was kind of doing things behind the scenes and wasn't really all that transparent. I think this team is a lot more. Tra I think Kyle is a lot more transparent in Chicago now, and wouldn't be worried so much about the return here. They like to get a pick, but I mean, well, ultimately they don't really have all that much leverage. Next. Colorado Avalanche, and that's been the big team. Like, this is so juicy, man. If it was a Colorado Avalanche, there's several reasons why this makes sense. He gets to go kind of back west, uh, where, you know, a little closer to Vegas, I guess. Um, but he also gets to go to a team that probably may most, may li most likely win uh, the President's Trophy this year. Might be the best team in the league right now. They just won 12 home games in a row. Uh, you got Landeskog, McKinnon, Rantanen, uh, you, you know, Nichuskin, Kadri's having a stellar year. You got an incredible defense. This could be something that he looks at and goes, I got a cup here. I can win a cup here. Um, now, the thing is, Darcy Kemper has been playing better as of late. Pavel Francouz came out off, back off of injury, and you can see his numbers as well. Now, you can also see that Mr. Grubauer, who played for the Colorado Avalanche, who put up Vesna-like numbers, is all of a sudden not doing so good in Seattle, right? I was never a Grubauer guy. I think this defense here props up goaltenders a lot. Marc-Andre Fleury does not need propped up. Could you imagine the numbers he could throw up playing behind Tays, McCarr, Johnson, Gerrard? Uh, uh, and, and the rest of the defense that they have here. Bowen Byram isn't even in the lineup or Murray. This defense is spectacular. And I don't think he's ever played. Even in Pittsburgh, I'm not sure. I could be wrong. I don't think he's ever played for a defense this good. Um, this has almost got cup written all over it. Now, Colorado does have some cap room, actually. Uh, I think that making the money work here wouldn't be too difficult. Probably the very guy that, uh, probably Darcy Kemper would have to go back here. He has struggled a little bit, um, but like I said, he's been better as of late. Now, they could just believe in Darcy Kemper and say, forget it, we don't need it. But I got to figure Joe Sackick at least has got to pick up the phone. You got a guy, Marc-Andre Fleury, that brought Vegas to the finals a couple of years ago. And really, Vegas had no business doing it. When he was in Pittsburgh, he's been insane. The guy is just an insane goaltender. As much as you might like Darcy Kemper, if Colorado has Fleury in their lineup uh, as their goaltender, and he gets an opportunity to play around these players for a while until the play, this has got to be, this would put, Colorado, I would say, as the number one favorite to win the cup. It would be an insane move for that to happen. What do you guys think in Colorado there? By the way, if you're enjoying this fine programming, sub yourself up, hit the like button. Love to have you join me. Give me a comment in the comment section, guys. What do you think about Flurry going to Colorado? And next, we have the Washington Capitals. And this is actually my most likely possibility for him to go to. I've been saying this right from the beginning. I thought that the Washington Capitals should have been in on him when he was going to get traded, when he got traded to Chicago. Now, cap room was the problem, right? They would have had to have probably included Samsonov in the deal. And even then, they'd have to give up a lot on their roster. I'm not saying they were definitely not thinking about it, maybe calling and asking if they would retain some money, but it was quite obvious that Vegas was not going to retain money, in which case Washington couldn't do that. Samsonov has not been great this year. Uh, 2.77 and a .903, and I've been watching him. He is all over the place. He looks like a fish out of water there. He's out of position so much. In fact, those numbers don't even really say how bad he's been. He's been worse than those numbers in the games that I've watched anyways. Vanacek has played a little better. Um, he's relatively young. He has very little NHL experience and the Wash or very little playoff NHL experience. And the Washington Capitals are so, 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 so win now. 
big time win now. Ovechkin's 36. Backstrom is 34. They're their main guys. They're not getting any younger, and I don't think they're going to get better as they get younger. Although Ovechkin, maybe not. He's just being sick. Ovechkin could probably play until he's 50. But Backstrom, he, you know, he's. If you watch Backstrom out there, he's not quite what he was before. He's still very good, but he's not what he was before. Kuznetsov's having a killer year. He's 29 now. You know, they're starting to tip the scales here um, where you got to really – TJ Oshie is injured more often than not right now. Hopefully he can get back in the lineup and he can be there for the playoffs. But – on paper, this team, when you compare them to Colorado that we just talked to, the Tampa Bay Lightning and, and Florida, they're not cup contenders right now. But a guy like Fleury could sure make them that way. Fleury is the kind of goaltender that can fill in gaps in your lineup real quick because you notice their defense here of Fahervi, Carlson, Orloff, Schultz, Kempney, and Van Riemsdyk. If you compare those defenses to like the team I just talked about in Colorado uh, or Tampa Bay, for that matter, it's not quite there. In fact, I would say it's average at best. So put a flurry in there, all of a sudden your average defense turns into a very good defense real quick. Chicago has a terrible defense. He stops pucks. Flurry's stopping pucks like crazy. The cool thing about him being in Chicago right now is the highlight reel for Flurry is going to be probably a half an hour long this year because he's just stopped making such amazing saves because he has to. Now, that this defense is better than Chicago's, and their overall team defense has been a lot better this year under Laviolette. I would say this would be something they would have to strongly consider. Now, I think... Uh, Either Vanacek or Samsonov would have to go back in the deal. And even more, be more money. And I haven't mentioned it in any of the other uh, videos that I did here, or uh, any other teams. If he is interested, and I think being, going to Washington's a little closer to Pittsburgh, um, you know, maybe where he used to live, of course, for a very long time, I think he could definitely see an opportunity here to win a cup. And that's the team that Fleury identifies that he would like to go to. And if you've been listening to the whole video, Chicago has said this, this deal is only going to happen if Fleury says he wants to do it, which I think is very possible because Chicago is so bad. Then there probably wouldn't be need much return here. They're sort of doing Fleury a favor, sending him where he wants to go. Um, you know, somehow they may even retain some money. It's just money for one year anyways to make it work. And if they could get a young goaltender like Vanacek to give him a shot for a while, I think they might be happy with that. You might just get away with just goaltender for goaltender. All right. What do you think, Washington Capitals fans? Do you like that idea of Flurry going there? I'll tell you. I don't know. It seems to me that uh, – that – Washington isn't quite there, and Flurry could do it. Well, that's my full 42. That's the four teams that I have Flurry going to and why. Sub yourself up. Hit, your, hit the like button. Come join me on my live. I do a live stream from 1.30 to 3.30 weekdays. I do live streams in the evening where I do hockey analysis for several great, uh, great uh, creators such as Off the Wall Hockey, and uh, Peyton on the radio. It's fun. It's a blast. You want to join me. Have a great day, everybody. That's my full 42. Okay, bye.